Yo! And it looks like it's gonna have to be more fun to go in the packet, so it's not unusual about that. Who needs the whole shit? Garage K! Welcome back to Garage K, filmed right here on this Samsung phone. Today we'll be working on the Every. Now that intro kind of sounded like I'm sponsored by Samsung, which I am not. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, now, uh, I have already set this up so it's easy. Trip A, I always have set uh, so that I know where, how long it's been since I've done an oil change. As you can see, it's uh, 8,788 kilometers, which is a lot farther, further, farther, further than it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be done every three. Um, why would you do that? Um, why would you do that? I'm lazy and... Yeah, that's, pr that's pretty much it. Yep, can't be bothered. Um, these are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a 17mm socket. I don't know why I picked a long one, just did. You may need this to get the oil filter out. Um, I didn't change the oil filter last time. On the last video I did changing oil and someone got really upset, very upset in the comments. So we're going to do the oil filter this time and it is it is due as you... As you know, it's done 8,000 kilometers. It's quite comical, really. I mean, there is literally no excuse for me not doing the oil filter every time. I have what? That's that uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine filters that will fit my car in total. And um, yeah, there's no excuse except for laziness. So what oil filter fits? Um, this is the one I've got. It is a, uh, a Road Partner oil filter. 1PO4-14-302C um, Nothing special about it. Now what does it fit? As long as the size is right, anything will fit. A lot of people in America are like, what fits? Um, well, I don't really know because I just buy the one that I can get. Um, here's another one. Is this the same one? This is an SU-12. What is this? This doesn't say SU-12 on it. I got this from Autobux for $9.20. Um, let's see. we got the... 1P, so these are the same. Also have this one, this is an HKS. Um, now this has on it that it is a UNF 3 quarter 16 thread and it has the sizes in which you need for it to fit. So if you can't get one of those in the States, match it up with that. This is 65 pi outer and a 55 pi inner. HKS baby, oh yeah, um, and cappuccino and every and uh, carry all use the same SU12. So yeah, what are you going to need? You're going to need those. You might need some brake cleaner. You're going to need a bucket to catch the oil. You don't need a jack. That's one of the beautiful things about this car is you don't need a jack. Now you will need some oil. I'm using 10W30 because it was cheap. You will also need a funnel of some description. Um, I have used a uh, plastic pet bottle before, but ideally you want a funnel. Okay, the steps. How do you do it? Well, step one, get this under the car. There we go. Now locate the drain plug, which is... Right there. See that? I'm just lying on the ground here, and it's um, it's right there. 17 will go straight on. I must clip that perfectly on. Um, undo that, let the oil go in there, and I'll see you in a second. Now, if you got the hell of skill, you managed to do that without dropping this into the oil that you're taking out. You're also going to want to... Uh, get to the top of the engine. Now my seats aren't standard seats for this car, uh, but locate your um, lever for moving the, the lever, the lever, the lever, the lever for moving the seat back forward. And then under here you'll find latches. Undo that latch, undo that latch, and then just lift. Do you even lift, bro? Um, down in there is the dipstick. You'll need to have access to that to check while you're putting new oil in. Let's go to the other side. Same deal here. Locate that. Don't get hit in the head with that. Again. Latch. 
latch. Um, let's open that up. There we go. Let's talk a little bit about compatibility. This is a DA52V. Uh, they also came in a, a truck version, so the DA or DB52T, um, and even a DA62. Ah, uh, where do you begin? The front, the front panels, these are the same. The headlights are the same, however, on a on a four-wheel drive model with aircon, the headlights are actually different, and on a DA62, they're different as well. You can get the 62 lights to fit on a four-wheel drive model with aircon, but you have to heat it up with uh, a heat gun and melt it so that it fits past the there's an air con thing in there i'm not really sure what it is but it's some kind of canistery thing that's in the way heat it up it will fit that's what i had to do on my carry to get those clear headlights um the bonnet fits the the, the hood the bumper fits everything everything's the same essentially uh moving back the doors are not a hundred percent the same but they do go on in some of these some of the later model ones there'll be a hole in here um, and then there'll be a plastic cover over it probably only 62 you'll find that but essentially they're the same all the way to here and then things get weird same goes for the chassis the chassis is the same the whole way under you can't use a carry exhaust on an every and vice versa you can't do that they're not shaped the same uh, engines are fully swappable, gearboxes, gearboxes are fully swappable. Uh, during editing of this, um, I want to correct that. When I say that they fit, they're swappable. That's not entirely true. You can get any of those transmissions to bolt up. Even the K6A will bolt to F6A, and we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, but if you start swapping... Uh, gearboxes with v between van and truck even between van and van and van and truck and truck and truck and van and van if you start mixing those up it's quite possible you'll have uh, propeller shaft issues uh, ask me how I know there's a vast number of different drive shafts uh, and they're all different lengths so uh, be very careful when doing that, otherwise you could end up buying uh, multiple drive shafts to try to get it to fit. Just keep that in mind. Um, that's about all you really need to know about that. Now I will show you this. This center console is not from a 52 or a 62, I think it's from a 64, possibly even a 65. I'll have to double check that. This doesn't just bolt straight in. There isn't actually anything holding that on except for the fact that it's pulled up against the, um, the wall so nicely. It just fits well. Drop a screw in there, the factory screw fits. It is stressed a little bit, um, but no big deal. Other than that, fits really well. The, as you can see, the boot doesn't fit perfectly, so I made a little cover panel. Look at all Ted's hair in there, it's crazy. Everyone loves Ted. Now I need to clarify that as well. This particular console came out of an automatic, which is why the hole is bigger. If you get a manual one, then it just goes straight in. Uh, that's what I have in the carry truck, and I didn't have a problem. Didn't think about that when I bought this one for the van. Um, and yeah, the hole's too big. So just get a manual one, and you'll be sweet. You won't need the adaptery thing, which is just a piece of... 3 mil plywood that I wrapped some vinyl over. It's not a big deal. Anyway, back with it. Um, but yeah, much better center console than the stock one, and it does go in, as you can see. It fits perfectly in the carry. It doesn't fit as perfectly in here. Takes a mod. I'll show you the mod now. It is kind of possible that because I changed the seats, that may have also affected this. But what I've had to do here is actually cut this panel here. This is a, a plywood panel, 3mm plywood that I trimmed. 
to cover up the fact that I cut a V out of here so that I could pull the sides in because these used to be vertical but as you can see they they now come in and it's a very very tight fit it does actually touch um, but this is not a show car it's just to be functional um, yeah so that's how you get that to fit now if you have one of these trucks and you have a keen eye you'll notice that the uh, the fuel lever isn't here anymore isn't there anymore you could put it there but I kind of wanted the pocket that little pocket there so what I've done is I moved it over to there I moved it to here now you could spend a bit of time cutting out this plastic to get it to fit right but um, I just needed it there and it's it's in like it works so I mean as you can see fully functional I think it's actually better there if you wear like a, um, a hip bag or something, it is possible that it could get hooked on it. Uh, the wife's handbag or something, if she keeps it on this side, it's possible that it might get hooked on it. But, I mean, not really a big deal. And it frees up your actual living space or driving space, if you will. So I think that's a very worthwhile mod. Two roof certs and it's in. So, a worthwhile, worthwhile mod in my opinion. Now, more about compatibility. You'll notice that the seat rails, seat rails come down and they bolt to the back there. That is to allow the seat to come right back. These seat rails will not fit in a truck. You have to have truck specific ones. Okay, let's talk about seats. Uh, now, it is possible to put an every seat inside a carry truck. I have seen that done. I'm not 100% sure on what modifications were required to do that, but I can assure you that the seat rails were not used. The seat itself was probably unbolted from the every seat rail and then bolted to the carry seat rail somehow. You cannot do the reverse because the back of the seat in a carry is bolted to the wall and obviously in the every there is no wall so you've got nothing to bolt it to okay recapping you can't use carry rails in an every and vice versa you can't use a carry seat in an every but you can use an every seat in a carry be aware that if you do that however you will sacrifice space because the every seat is thicker than a carry seat okay okay oil stopped coming out so let's put the drain plug back in and we'll undo the uh the oil filter and that's on the other side again we don't need to jack up the car for this dave where's the oil filter located well there's that front wheel it's right there all you gotta do is grab hold of it give it a twist and then let the oil drain out oh look at that hand tight which means it's hand tight which means that I did it because I don't like having my um, oil filters done up too tight I'm getting oil all over myself all over myself it's all over myself we yeah, almost dropped it right now there's a nice little nice little uh, which I can't get access to there's a nice little shelf on my bucket for draining the oil filter oh, this is a Suzuki one look at that Suzuki genuine Jesus splurged actually I think I think the Suzuki one was cheaper than the than a road partner one at the time I don't know road partner um, there's the road partner part number uh, made in Thailand that doesn't fill me with confidence. Um, it comes with some kind of grease on it. There's a big debate about whether you should uh, put oil on it. It does say so in the manual, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, how much torque are you supposed to add on this thing? Um, there's a lot of Japanese. 15 to 20 Nm of torque, which means absolutely fuck all your honour. I always do these hand tight and I've never ever had one leak so well, you do what you got to do but yeah I just do it as tight as I can with my hand and then it's done.
that means also that when it's time to take it off, they're very rarely stuck on there. A lot of shops like to rattle gun them on or use an impact wrench. I think they're mad. You end up having to spear the thing with a screwdriver to get it off. Yep, hand tight's good enough. So I'll get some used oil on my finger, rub it around the, uh, the rubber ring there, and then screw this in. Here we are, oil's out, filter's changed, uh, new filter's tightened by hand. I just sprayed it with some uh, parts cleaner and then used a rag to twist it as tight as I could make it with my hand. Um, now, Suzuki genuine part number. And there it is. It's made in Austria. That's weird. Hey everybody, I'm from Holland. Isn't that weird? Okay, now I'm not an oil expert. Let's have a look at it. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it looks like oil. It's not very thick, is it? No. I would think that it's supposed to be thicker than that, but after 8,000 kilometers, what do you expect? It does still feel oily, so. <laughs> um, let's get some of that shit in it. Okay, I mentioned the funnel before because this is quite deep and you can't get, well, pouring from this height's gonna suck. So, get that out of there. Get our funnel. <laughs> Covered in Ted's hair. Rightio. Funnel's there like that. Let's get to pouring. Here's a pro tip for you. If you decide that you're going to go to cheaper oil, you might find that your lid is a oncer. Now, this lid you pop off with a screwdriver and then it's there, it's gone, you can't use it again. Um, you can hammer it back on, but it's not, not very good. However, on certain mobile, or mobile, whatever you want to call it, cans, you get the pop top style one. Reusable. Um, so yeah, I keep this one and then use it on a crappy can. And just when this can is empty, I'll take this with me, throw this away, and put this one on the new one. Now someone is bound to ask, how much oil does it take? Well, if you bought a quality vehicle, then you should have got yourself an owner's manual. However, if you didn't, um, then pay attention. Page 213. Engine oil, the grade. This is the grade here. What are we doing? 10W30, which is what I used. Um, and... Just the oil change is 3.2 litres. With the filter, is 3.4 litres. There you go. Now, if you're forgetful like me, or just in a hurry and can't be bothered opening that every time, I made a cheat sheet. Oil 3.2, filter 3.4. Also, to check the engine light, uh, short DN to ground. Um, there you go. Little cheat sheet. Save yourself some time. Boom. I can't film this step without a tripod because I have to hold this up so that the hose doesn't crimp and then because um, it kind of goes like so just I mean you just pour oil in just do it okay I've got it to a level where I think it's acceptable it's not all the way up to the full line but it doesn't have to be anyway I'm happy with where it is I'm gonna start it up let it run for probably 30 seconds and then turn it off again and then check levels so let's do that see that as I was saying I was almost at the full line before but now that I've kicked over oil pressure and it's filled up the um, the oil filter and move some engine around the move some oil around the engine I'm just on halfway so I'll check this again and then probably add some more oil oh my god so many trips back and forth why didn't you just use a container that had 3.4 liters written on it, fill it up and then pour it into the engine. Well, yeah, I could do that and I do have a container to do that with, but what if the person watching doesn't have that? You can do it this way. It takes ages, but you can it can be done. You don't have to spend money on on a 3.4 liter container to get this done. You can just do it this way. So, I've uh, put some more oil in. Let's check it. Where are we at? Uh, we're just below full, which will do nicely. That'll be fine. Finished. 
that is how you change your oil on an every now this doesn't just apply to an every this applies to every car every car is the same people think some people some people think that the k cars are special they're not it's just an engine not much special about them they were made in the cheapest way possible especially the suzuki's daihatsu isn't much better from what i hear anyway there's that next and that is it for this episode thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed it please leave a like if you'd like to see what i do next hit that subscribe button and make sure you got the bell on so that you get a notification when i make a new video if you'd like to support the channel head on over to garagek.com and pick up a sticker or get your name on the Garage K door. Also details on how to do that are in the description. See you later.